So quick introduction to streaming analytics here, or our, our flavor of streaming analytics. The highest level, <clears throat> it's processing of real-time data and a, a development environment for creating applications that process real-time data. It's a visual design environment, and what we do is, you know, you drag and drop, you know, to create your model, and then the system compiles down to Java byte code, so the extremely high performance, um, real-time data processing, data aggregation, data cleansing, filtering, and, and, and so on. <clears throat> now then, recently, I guess maybe last month or a couple of months ago, we released Streambase 10, and so it's version 10, you know, so we're getting quite mature here on this capability. And this has been rede redeveloped, the, the, the core experience has been redeployed on top of a, a fault tolerant transaction processing engine that we acquired about six years ago from a company called Kibera. So <clears throat> whereas Streambase used to be an extremely kind of tactical tool for building real time applications quickly and getting, you know, getting solving problems, it now, in addition to doing that, scales out massively to be fault tolerant, highly available, you know, transaction ready, and, and also cloud ready, by the way. We don't yet offer a cloud service for, for streaming analytics, but, you know, we're thinking about how that might take place in the future. Now then, Michael also mentioned <clears throat> that there is an embedded tear engine inside of Streambase. So the models that we build in the, in the Spotfire environment, for example, or maybe more realistically in our studio or some other kind of statistician development environment, those same models can be used in a visual environment like Spotfire and deployed to the real-time environment for continuous scoring. Um, the system is extremely fast and extensible, and it's more or less constructed in three layers. There's the event flow, that's what we call the, the kind of processing engine. Sitting on top of that is something called the live data mart, which is a, a dynamic cache that uh, does aggregations. And then on top of that is something called live view web, which is real-time graphics in, uh, in the browser. Um, so that's the kind of stack of, of Streambase. Now, so we've started to allude to some of these kind of connection points. And let me tell you the story of, well, you saw the figure eight, right? The, the infinity diagram. How does it fit together? Let me make it a little bit more kind of prosaic here. You know, how does it work? So real-time data feeds come in, and we have hundreds of adapters for, you know, clickstream data or sensor data, whatever kind of real-time data that you might have, you know, capital markets, high, high frequency trading information comes in uh, and into our streaming analytics engine where we can either persist it in a big data store or in a spark type layer or and usually and in the um, in the live view um, data mart kind of um, layer on top of that uh, per, uh, long term persistence okay now we can take spotfire and reach inside of that uh, cache inside of that mart, extract the data. We don't yet do in mart analytics, but that's you'll see in the in the prediction that's coming soon. We can extract a snapshot of that real time data, pass it through the tear engine, and build our predictive model. Right. So the whole idea here is getting ready to do real time predictions. The data is flowing through. There's typically some pre processing, aggregation, computation of new variables. We push that into our cache. We can extract it from the cache and build the real time, or build the predictive model. And often, I mean, I would say almost always, the data that's flowing through the real time system is necessary but not sufficient to solve the whole problem. Because we have customer history, we have maintenance history, we have all this other stuff that's the more classical historical data. So we want to use data wrangling to blend those pieces together. And that's often the basis by which you then create the best, you know, most informed predictive models using the context of history. And then the system runs. So now the real time data is flowing through through the streaming analytics kind of preprocessor and you know real time wrangling if you will into the mart we apply the predictive model using the tear engine and then we layer on top of that a command and control system that consists of the live view dynamic visualizations in the in the web and the spotfire applications as a matter of fact we have four or five customers now who are mashing those up so they have side by side in a single web based dashboard the historical view and the real time view and they're connected to one another so that if i have an anomaly that i that gets detected in the real time system i might say well what have i seen in the history for this anomaly let me mark um, these 
uh, you know, VIN number cars or you know whatever uh, pump uh, identification numbers, and then pass that marked record over into the historical query and get you know what went on in the past from a maintenance history point of view, or vice versa. I'm doing an analysis of my history and I say, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what's going on right now. Click the button and get the real-time feed information side by side in the same application. Now then. In addition to that, of course, here's where the action takes place. When the predictive model, say the propensity goes up ab above a certain fraction, 75% likely to buy or to commit fraud or whatever that use case happens to be, now we have a whole series of business rules that can be applied to that and say when this condition exists and that condition exists, take this action and connect to business applications. So this could be all the way from the pure real time, you know, put the card on hold all the way down to kick off a business process management system for reviewing network fraud. In effect, push it up to the home office and say, let's kick off a human-based process, hopefully using TIPCO software as well. You know, so there's really the sort of real-time stuff and there's human-based stuff. And then most interestingly, often what you want to do is close that loop and say, I wonder if our model is no longer appropriately uh, predicting the behavior that we want to identify. So it could be a root cause analysis, maybe the model is fine, but something, you know, something crashed and therefore we want to go resolve that. Or maybe the model has aged and we need to regenerate that model so we can go back in to the contextual environment and revise the model, compare it to history, compare it to previous generations of model. And remember, as I mentioned, we have this uh, artifact management server uh, system inside of Streambase that can help you to manage and, and govern that, that whole history of artifacts. Can you compare it to a threshold of uh, false positives, false negatives, instead of going all the way back to context. In other words, we, your your false positives are out of control. Something. Sure, we're going to get into that in, sure. in, in okay, the demo. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I just wanted to give you. So we gave you the kind of marketing level view. There's this like orange colored figure eight idea, right? Yeah. I mean, and you know, so I want to make. Back. So this is now more kind of concrete. How do the pieces actually fit together? We don't have time to talk about the, the discrete areas of interoperability. That's actually quite interesting. But we, you know, we'll skip that in the interest of time and now we can get right to the demo thing this is joseph yeah go ahead joseph if i could just ask a quick one well maybe not quick but food for thought when you say real-time predictions are you just talking uh scoring of machine learning uh in that yeah, yeah that's, the basic, yeah that's the basic yeah that's the basic concept usually scoring but we also can do some other stuff uh, beyond that we can uh kick off a batch process to retrain from Streambase. We do that in our real-time pricing area. So let me get into uh, the demo and uh, I'll take those questions in context. So this is a, a set of wells in, in North Dakota that we're managing from Houston. Um, and these are some of the wells out there. There's some study wells that we're particularly interested in. Uh, and we know that there's been some failures there recently. And I'm gonna color the failures here in, in red. And I can now uh, look at um, those failures in more detail. I'm showing the, uh, you know, the intake pressure on the pump in, in blue and the current in green. And I can see this little spiking behavior here, right here on this, on this chart. But now let me try and understand this in a little more detail. So I can pick four wells that have had a similar failure, uh, line them up against the point of failure here, this black vertical line and look backwards in time. And I can see leading up to this, there's been an increase in pressure and a decrease in current. So I can now start to understand that, um, you know, in, and I can pick off, say, an individual well that uh, in this case has had one of those spiking behaviors. This could be a, a buildup of um, gas in the downhole or a plug tube. When the pressure spikes up like that and the current jumps down, the pump actually shuts itself off, which is obviously bad for production. And this, you know, it's happening on a, on a repeated basis here. So this is a signal that you want to detect and, and, and go and take, uh, take corrective action. Now, you know, a lot of the pumps are not doing that. Here's a pump that's just randomly fluctuating between pretty tight limits, 572, 577. So we've got some noise there, you know, that we can build uh, thresholds on compared to this one, which is a couple of hundred points in, in jump there. So I can, uh, I can build out some control charts that look at, um, you know, different, uh, different well types and I can understand, uh, you know, how, uh, how I might want to build a control chart on, the, on those and then apply it to the, to the outliers. And I can, as you pointed out, I can back test this against historical data to look at the true positive rate, that sort of thing. And now I can push those sorts of thresholds across 
to the live system. So uh, and now I can start to monitor that. While Brad was speaking, I, I set in motion a, a feed simulator that was generating data. And now I can see uh, here's the grid of those wells. And now I've got live data coming into Spotfire. Uh, the size of the circle is the pressure. Uh, the y-axis is the current. So when you see a big circle forming and dropping to the bottom, that means you've got you know, a low current and a high pressure. And I can see where that's happening on my set of wells over here. And so, you know, I've sped this data up, obviously, but I'm now getting lots of, you know, signals with the combination of high pressure and low current. And I can interact with this. I can, uh, I can click on this well here and I can say, well, let me notify operations. Let me go to, say, Barkin North. This is a high priority. You know, look at this kind of thing. Uh, so I can, from an operational dashboard, I can do that. But I've also set up in my workflow an automatic email when one of those thresholds is violated. I'll show you how that looks in a minute. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm able to kind of look at these wells and understand them. Uh, you know, I can see the traces here. So this is a, a well that's been misbehaving, and it looks like it's continuing to misbehave. Here's an actual schematic of the well and some of the data uh, around the well. This kind of live view on the data, we, we, we have in, in a variety of situations. We were talking earlier in, in the week about monitoring airports with this type of a, a, a live, uh, live view dashboard. And having the combination of this in Spotfire along with your historical data allows you to have this operational dashboard to monitor things, but we've got analytics going on uh, where we're setting up the thresholds and, and doing the alerting from as well. So a really kind of powerful combination between the contextual analysis and the, and the live charts. Oftentimes, these guys will have the live stuff on the wall in their room in Houston, whereas the you know, emails are getting generated and they're looking at the details sort of more in Spotfire. So, uh, you know, there's, I saw a couple of alerts come in. So here's uh, a, an alert came into uh, to this email address. We've got, uh, look, pressure's going up, current's gone down. Some uh, responsible engineer has got this email. You know, I can click on the link here. And there's a more detailed analysis of root cause in Spotfire that can be loaded from the, uh, you know, from the Spotfire library. Uh, you can configure this however you want. Um, in this case, I've just got a pretty simple graph. Here's the location. Here's some contextual data. Uh, but you can go to town on this. You could, this is job is set up in what we call Spotfire Automation Services, which is a headless version of Spotfire. You can configure this to show various root cause analyses, and then you can trigger that analysis off of that, off of that workflow. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, a, a number of things happening in this demo, right? We've got, um, uh, we had the control charting where we set up the um, thresholds. We've got the live view, and then we've got the alerts happening you know, out onto the through the email to, to the mobile device. So what's uh, underneath the hood of this, um, is, this is this stream-based product that I mentioned. Let me stop it now that you've seen you know, how, it, how it works uh, and point out a couple of the configuration aspects. So in this, uh, in this Sigma node here is where we're doing a lot of calculations. So this is where we're calculating features like the pressure over a rolling window or the slope uh, of pressure, um, you know, the average temperature. These are things that we configure in this Sigma node. And I like to think of this as creating features that you, you know, tr transformations, combinations of variables that you explore in Spotfire and you find them, but you do them right in line of the analysis here in Streambase. This node here is another point of connection. Uh, this is a piece of XML code down here. This is a, in this, in this headless uh, version of Spotfire Automation Services, you point and click your way through things that you want to have in that root cause analysis and it saves off a piece of XML. That XML you can now drop into Streambase, and here you see the logic. If, if the pressure goes above a certain amount uh, is a, and you do some various tests, then push out this root cause analysis along with the notification. Uh, so that allows you to kind of take that threshold, uh, test it against the data that you've, that you've calculated, the feature you've calculated, and then generate a spot fire analysis on that trigger. This yellow section out here is pushing the data out into, that, into a live data mart, which is a live cache that we maintain. Uh, and that is what's feeding that real-time visualization inside of Spotfire. So a really kind of interesting combination uh, this time of our predictive uh, and streaming products.